Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. It is the Earth Master out here, 10.05 p.m. local time in California. May 13th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.5 earthquake across the western Texas area out in the oil fields. A lot of earthquake activity ramping up here in the last 24 hours. Seen uh, a number of large earthquakes following... Um, a proton event earlier from an X flare, not even really directly facing the Earth, uh, but we got uh, some proton events there, and it looks like that stirred it up as expected. I kind of chatted about that this morning to watch for some larger uptick in earthquake activity, and sure enough, here we are. So let's take a look here. Let's pull up the last 24 hours of largest magnitude earthquakes here. We've had two six pointers since this morning's update. Close six-pointer right here, 5.9 over off the coast of Mexico. Uh, that appears to be the first earthquake earlier this afternoon. A lot of a lot of movement hip, uh, hitting right now. So let's go ahead and check this out. There's the latest quake of 6.4, pretty deep into the Tonga area. If you look here on the earthquake 3D globe, it's raised off the globe uh, quite nicely, indicating a super deep subduction subduction zone earthquake. Now that's uh. Somewhat common for this area. Uh, the other large earthquake here, going to be this one out across the Mediterranean, out around Greece. It's been a, a few years since we've seen a magnitude of this level out there across the Mediterranean Sea. 6.0 coming in, 46 miles deep, just off the plate boundary here, not associated with the Santorini area of Greece. I did pull up the Santorini uh, Greece seismograph station here. Where is it? That's the latest one. Here's here's the uh, previous uh, 24 hours there. That includes that six-pointer showing up quite nicely there on this seismograph station that is at the dead center of Santorini Volcano. So I wanted to look and see if there's any local activity at Santorini Volcano. There's a little bit, but look at that giant 6.0 signature there. Showed up quite nicely in the area santorini sits of course up here in this general region no uh no effect whatsoever that i can see from that large earthquake um, in that area although short time later uh literally within minutes of that six pointer out there we've seen a 4.1 earthquake you can see it jumbled in there let me see if the usgs is reporting that they're not uh this 4.4 in italy is from earlier but uh yeah, there's a little bit of movement almost immediately following that six-pointer back over here across this area. Looks like it's, uh, oh, just off the west coast here of Greece in this region. So watch this area closely. It can get some big earthquakes out there, obviously. Uh, but uh, quite the uptick going on here. I want to show you guys the space weather activity here real quick. Um, let's go over here to solarham.com. And um, looks like the proton events have mellowed out here a little bit. But earlier today, they were somewhat elevated following a large X flare that kicked off there on the eastern limb of the sun uh, from a massive sunspot area that's no longer visible. This is going to be this region right here in X 1.21. Uh, that triggered a little bit of proton events there, shot off some high-speed solar protons from the sun at the speed of light. And uh, since then, another decent size M flare. Although this M flare from a totally different region, this M flare came off of a sunspot over here on the uh, eastern limb, this massive area. The X flare barely can see that sunspot area. That's where the X flare came from. So let's take a look here at this newer area that produced the most recent M flare. That's going to be 4087 here. Really, uh, Really wasn't expecting much from this region, but maybe we got a little bit of complexity here developing around that center core area. That would get things going there in terms of producing some stronger flares. So we'll watch that as that further rotates into the Earth-directed view. Not really too concerned with this area over here. Um, I did have quite a few folks asking me on my last video here why I would want a Earth-directed solar flare. Well, uh, for one, they create some awesome auroras up in the sky, uh, and that's about it. Uh, also, I'd like to compare, see how you, these solar events 
compare in relation to earthquake activity. And even though that X flare was back over here off the western limb, uh, the proton event still affected Earth a little bit, and it looks like that kicked up some earthquake activity. So I'd like to, um, you know, when things somewhat directly uh, hit us, I, I like to see how the effects of a CME um, compared to uh, elevated earthquake activity and so on. There's many different factors in play here as to why I would want something Earth directed, but not for doom and gloom. You know, I don't want to see the Earth uh, destroyed, but none of these solar flares are going to do that. Right, even some stronger X flares are not going to do anything to the Earth, aside for uh, to maybe produce uh, some stronger proton events, and and if we get a CME activity, a large CME event, uh, some auroras. But that's my reasoning for why I'd like to see Earth-directed events. Um, I like to study them. So it looks like right now this area back over here on the east, eastern limb fairly bright in nature here that's a uv image of the sun that could produce some further uh, stronger flaring we'll watch that here in the days ahead as it rotates further into the earth directed view uh, we also have a fairly massive coronal here coronal hole number 48 here kind of odd shaped but it is stretching up center disc that could spell uh, a little bit of aurora activity here once it's in the earth directed view it takes a couple days for that high speed solar wind stream here to reach the planet unlike the proton events there that are shot off at the speed of light um, from the sun during that X flare earlier. So we'll wait for that uh, once it gets into the Earth directed view. Um, flare threat somewhat minimal right now, but again, we'll continue to watch that. Let's get back to earthquake activity out here. And it looks like Northern California, 2.6 earthquake coming in in the last hour. Just one minute. It's about ready to drop off the uh, one hour threshold. I bet you there's trimmer activity out here again. Let's go check and see what we have for the Cascadia trimmer. And there you go. 371 epicenters. A continued increase here of trimmer activity, mainly across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. All right, a lot of trimmer activity here in the last... Oh, the last week, basically. So the trimmer activity is not volcanic, but it's slow slip events between the two plates. The Juan de Fuca plate here offshore, subducting underneath the North American plate. The Cascadia subduction zone begins right here, right, the southern end. Uh, the trimmer activity occurring underneath this area. So when the, when the trimmer activity kicks up, obviously it's a slow slip event between the two plates. It means that they're moving. And when that happens, strain builds upstream here. That's how you build the steam and momentum for a big earthquake out here along the Cascadia. We're seeing almost immediate results from the trimmer activity that occurs. Just like this earthquake here and one earlier at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Quite active out there. Uh, trimmer activity is continuing. Uh, look here at the last seven days. Uh, last week of activity here shows 2,577 epicenters of trimmer mainly across the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. More recently, a little bit up north, but it's on the move here, folks. So and I've always said when things are on the move across Cascadia, along the slow slip areas downstream, that's a time to watch for some larger activity upstream across the Cascadia locked area. For the Seattle area, a couple smaller earthquakes out there today. A mixed bag, it looks like. Uh, 2.8 earlier this morning. <coughs> that is... Uh pretty early earthquake out there let's go ahead and check out uh the bay area san francisco pretty quiet not a whole lot going on out there once again it's been unusually quiet quite rare for the bay area to go so quiet out there lake tahoe a couple smaller earthquakes uh very small earthquakes there outside of uh outside of Truckee. Uh, southern california wow not a whole lot going on down here either look at that uh, very quiet conditions here. This is a little below the normal background levels that we see on any given day out here for earthquake activity. <coughs> Let me grab something to drink here real quick. So, not a whole lot going on in Southern California for now, but it's not always going to stay that way. Northern California... Uh, along the Cascadia northward here is an area to watch for right now for some movement with that uptick in trimmer. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Well, let me uh, pull up my 
Yellowstone overview here to see what we have. Not a whole lot going on there. A couple smaller earthquakes it looks like in the last hour or so. Very small microquakes there. Really not seeing anything of abnormal activity. The darker blue lines there. Some thunderstorms rolling through the area. Picking up on the seismograph stations earlier uh, in the afternoon time period. Texas, pretty quiet. Oklahoma, quiet. New Madrid seismic zone, quiet. Eastern portion of the country, quiet. So it looks like right now the North American plate is at ease. Uh, far as inland activity goes, the Cascadia, though, still amplified there with the, uh, the trimmer activity stirring up in portions of Northern California as well. So we'll watch that. Uh, there's that five-pointer off the coast of Mexico earlier this afternoon. Uh, 5.9 to be exact, ways away from populated areas. That's a good thing. But that's just, you know, the the latest and we're well, not latest, but the it seemed it seemed like it started off with that earthquake this morning, uh, afternoon time period there. Uh, there was a 5.1 earlier this morning. That's a divergent boundary zone. Normally it puts strain out here across the South America area following any earthquake activity, but looks like this whole region uh, somewhat unstable out there. We are seeing a lot of smaller microquakes out here across the Perugili Trench. A bunch of threes and twos out there. Um, this is a... Uh, gotta pull this down, I guess, a little bit or raise it up to bring back only the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. For some reason it was still showing that earthquake out in uh, Illinois from last night. Uh, Japan still waiting on the Nankai trough out here. You know, it's going to happen here. We got a lot of strain building up around it or on it with a lot of earthquake activity happening around it. Taiwan's starting to kick up deeper activity here across the Izu Trench. Obviously, you have to watch this area closely because that's where a lot of the strain and momentum of the strain can transfer to. The Curl Cam chat got pretty quiet up there. Uh, some earthquake activity down south, three pointer out in Australia. Also 3.6 there, just on, it looks like that's on the Alpine Fault, South Island region. That's another area out here across western South Island that's uh, well overdue for some large earthquake activity. The thing is, that can happen at any given time. I just got to be prepared here. All right, so even though it's somewhat quiet out here across the North American plate right now, Cascadia Tremor elevated resulting in earthquake activity upstream. This could go at any minute as well. Smaller quakes out there across Alaska, but that's very common. Nothing of an unusual activity. Uh, Big Island of Hawaii, there's a little odd quake out here offshore, 3.6, uh, well off the coast there. I want to see what's going on with that. Let me pull up the latest deformation map here. See if anything's changed there across Kilauea Volcano. Um, no, we're still going up here. No unusual activity. A lot of times these earthquakes that are happening well below the, the surface area uh, can show up as changes there across the inflation and deflation map. But I don't see any change. We're following the rinse and repeat cycle here, number 21 or 22. Who knows? I, getting close. I think 21 will be our next episode. Um, rinse and repeat cycle there. It's been doing this since, uh, well, December of last year. So the eruption will come here probably in, oh, I'm, I'm guessing by the 17th or so here in a few days, we'll see that return after a period of inflation going on there across Kilauea volcano. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. We double check space weather. 4087 we'll watch that yeah, I guess it's got another core back over here so that area may be kicking up there in complexity so we'll watch that closely that's about the only one though that's uh, capable of producing anything decent really not too concerned with this area uh, storm prediction center a little bit of se severe weather over the next couple days nothing major Looks like day three here, which is going to be uh, Thursday. Got an enhanced zone up here across the area of Wisconsin. Maybe uh, 
Uh, some further severe weather threats there on Thursday, but we'll cover that as we get a little bit closer. Uh, seismograph stations out here. Some of them look to be offline. Hopefully they come back. It's actually the... Uh, uh, yeah, they're at the uh, plate boundary stations there that are offline. They come, they occasionally do that. Uh, but they should reset uh, sometime here tonight once they come back online. Uh, but for now, they look pretty quiet. Continue to keep an eye on the West Coast. And uh, we'll cover uh, anything that happens overnight in the Wednesday morning update here after a few hours of much needed sleep. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe out there, and uh, we'll catch you guys later.